Hey, g'day folks. Welcome back to Kieran's Training. So today we're going to look at some rigging terminology. One of the biggest problems a lot of students have is because they haven't been in industry before, um, they're not familiar with a lot of the terminology you use and what we call some of the items, uh, the tools that we actually use. Now, even those that are in industry, you might find that the terminology we use in the classroom isn't always necessarily the same as what you're going to hear out there in the real world. Okay, so what we're going to do today is we're just going to have a look at what we call a few things that we use. Alright, so um, we'll start off, we'll talk about the different types of um, slings we use and then we'll go on to talk about some other stuff that is involved with the rigging. Alright, so first I'll just make this a little bit smaller so we can have a look here. Okay, so we'll start off with um, our lifting gear. Alright, so first up, the most common lifting uh, equipment we use is the chains all right so we've got our chains over here and now with our chains all right so it's made up of a few different components so you've got your lifting rings all right now attaching um, your chains to the rings you've got your hammer locks here in the middle okay so your hammer locks are there that's what's used to attach chains to the rings okay um, off here you've got some sling shorteners so the sling shorteners are, in case you need a couple of those chain legs a little bit shorter due to the um, dimensions of the load, or the load might be a bit heavier on one side than the other, in that case you can use those shorteners to shorten up a couple of legs to try and get that load nice and even. Okay, then you've got your four different legs here. They do come in single leg, double leg, three, four legs, all right. Uh, they can be made to however you need them, all right. And down the bottom you've got your um, hooks, Right, so the hooks must be in good condition, the safety latches must be uh, working and no damage to them. Right, so there are chains, right? Then we've got our synthetic slings in the middle here. So synthetic slings are most commonly known as softies, okay, or soft slings, okay? Now you can see they are all different colours here, all right? Now the colours do represent the capacity of them, all right? But you can't rely on the colour, all right? The one thing you must re always rely on is the tag, okay? So if we look at these colours, the violet one here is um, one tonner, then you've got green is two, yellow is three, grey is four, red's five, brown is six, blue is yellow, and 10 ton or above, so whether it be 10, 20, 50, 100 ton slings, they are all gonna be orange, okay? So just make sure you double check on the tag, make sure they are equivalent. Because um, you'll find if you're working somewhere such as on a stage show, you'll find all of these things are going to be black, right? And that's so that when they are supporting stuff on stage, it can't be seen from the audience. Okay, so don't rely on the colour, make sure you rely on the tag. Okay, over here we've got our flexible steel wire rope swings, all right? Not used as commonly, okay? Um, I did use them a fair bit when I was working offshore. Um, when the equipment came out on the dumb barges and on the boats, etc., you'll find a lot of it's pre-slung, and when they pre-slung the load, they tend to use a flexible steel wire rope. Okay, so they're the three main types of swings we use, all right? So what we'll look at next, we'll see what's hiding underneath here. Okay, so, all right, so there are different types of swings, all right? Now there's some different swinging methods, all right? So the most common one, okay, over here you can see where the load has been um, choked, all right? So you'll see it's choked, okay? In With the green ones here and the yellow ones, you can see it's actually double choked. So if you're lifting a round load or multiple bits of steel, okay? It's a lot better to double wrap them, all right? And that way the slings aren't going to slide in on you. Okay, now, this is where it comes a little bit different in the classroom, all right? In the classroom, they'll quite often refer to it as being reeved, okay? So if they're talking about a reeved sling, they're just talking about a choked sling. Okay? Now, over here we'll have a look at the different setups. So we've got a vertical hitch, all right? So that's just a direct attachment, all right? So just a single sling with a direct attachment. Okay? Over here we've got a choke, all right? Next to that we've got a basket hitch. So a basket hitch where it goes straight around underneath the load and straight back up. Okay? And over here we have uh, what's known as a bridle hitch. So a bridle hitch is essentially just using more than one sling on the load. So you'll end up with a angle factor in there involved as well. Okay, so they're the easy basic ways to sling up a load. Okay, so underneath here, all right. 
So we've got our shackles. So two main types of shackles to use. So we've got our bow shackle, which is the one over here on the left. Okay, so your bow shackle, all right, that's used if you're using multiple slings. Okay, if you have a single sling, you can still use a bow shackle, but you can also use a D shackle if it is a single sling, okay? Keep in mind your shackles on the body must have a working load limit to tell you the capacity of the sling, okay? And they'll also have the grade of the shackle on there as well, all right? So two things found on the body is going to be the working load limit and the grade of the shackle. Okay. Now, when we're attaching slings to a load, you can quite often use um, some eye bolts on the load, okay, in order to attach the slings to. All right, two types of eye bolts we use. All right, we've got this one here, which is a collared. So our collared eye bolts, they can be used if the sling is pulling on an angle. All right, so if it's coming up here on an angle, all right, you can use your collared eye bolts. All right, if it's an uncollared eye bolt, all right, so there's no collar there, just straight down onto the stem, it's for a vertical lift only, all right? So a uncollared eye bolt is only for a vertical lift. Okay, what else have we got hiding under here? Okay, now this is one a lot of people does um, get a lot of people is a sheave, all right? They tend to call them lots of other things, all right? But typically they are known as sheaves, okay? So here we've got the sheave by itself, okay? but you're going to see them more commonly in a sheave block. So sheave blocks can have a single sheave, they can have twin sheaves, they can have three sheaves, okay? Um, you'll also find sheaves in hook blocks on the crane, on the um, boom head as well, all right? So all these sheaves, all right, people come in to class on them pulleys and all sorts of other things, all right? Um, so the terminology they're going to use when you get to the classroom, they're going to be calling them sheaves. Okay, what have we got next hiding under here? Okay, so we've got some turnbuckles, all right? Now, these can have a few different names too, all right? So we've got an open framed turnbuckle. So if you were to set up a static line or something on those lines, you've got to use an open framed turnbuckle, all right? And that allows you to see that thread all the way down, all right? So if there's any damage to the thread or you're getting near the end of the thread, you'll be well aware of it. Okay, now the, on the ends here, these type of terminations on the end, they are known as a clevis, okay? So that's a clevis turnbuckle, well a clevis open frame turnbuckle. Okay, you can also get them with a ring on the end or you can also get them with a hook on the end. Okay, and over here we've got a, it's still a turnbuckle but can also be called a bottle screw or a rigging screw. Okay, so there is a little bit of different terminology in there. Okay, so if you're going into basic rigging and you're going to be setting up static lines and using turnbuckles, these are the ones you're going to be using. You're going to be using an open framed turnbuckle. Okay, what do we got next? Okay, so a few different couple of different types of rope terminations. Okay, so what they call in class a wedge and socket here. All right, both of these are examples. Okay. So a wedge and socket is used to terminate the ends of a flexible steel wire rope, okay? Quite common on cranes, okay? Can also be used on um, static lines and things along those lines. Okay, now with the wedge and socket, so the rope goes through the, uh, through the bottom and comes out the other end and the wedge goes down in there and when you pull it tight, that wedge pulls it in uh, nice and tight. Okay. Although they're known as a wedge and socket in the classroom, they are most commonly known on site as a ham bone. Okay. So if you ever hear someone talking about the ham bone, or they've got the ham bone on the crane, right? This is the part they're talking about. It's what attaches the rope to the hook of the crane or the um, boom of the crane, depending on how many parts of line you have in it. Okay. So another way you can terminate a flexible steel wire rope, particularly on a static line is using a double saddle clamp, okay? So a double saddle clamp, if you're using it on a static line as opposed to a bulldog clamp, okay? A double saddle clamp is, gives you a lot more surface area to bite onto that flexible steel wire rope. So that's what you'll be using if you're doing a static line. Okay, so, so 
Okay, remember wedge and socket or hand bone. Okay, few pulling devices or lifting devices. Um, so, um, ooh, that just popped up out of nowhere. Let's get back. See if I can bring that. Where's that turf on? All right, bring that turf back. Right, there it is. All right. So, over here we have a come along. Very handy piece of equipment. Okay. So it's generally used if you want to pull something across. So quite handy if you're working somewhere like a refinery and you're pulling um, pipe work into place. Okay, so very handy piece of gear to come along. Okay, it can also be used to tension flexible steel wire up static lines. All right, turfer, okay, in the middle here. So a come along you typically use if something's off the ground level, okay? whereas a turfer, is a lot handier if it's actually on the ground level. It does make it a bit awkward when it's above ground. Okay, but they're both a pulling mechanism to pull items across. Okay, and over here we have a chain block. Okay, so a chain block should only be used for lifting um, vertically. Okay, if you try and pull horizontally with it, it's all going to jam up in the gears inside and it's going to make life pretty awkward for you. Okay, so there's three pieces of equipment commonly used as a come along, a turfer, and a chain block. Okay, now what have we got? All right, no, that's. Where am I going? That was the other one I wanted. All right, so now. A couple of different types of panels we use, okay? Now there's a bit of misconception on who can lift what. So when we've got two types of panels, we have our precast panels here, okay? Which are generally um, constructed off-site and then they're transported to site, okay? And then you have your tilt-ups, which are these ones here. And these ones are typically poured on-site and once they're cured and then they can be lifted, okay? Now, one of the main differences when it comes to lifting is when you're lifting a precast panel, you typically use edge lifters all right, to lift them up. Now, while you can lift precast panels with a basic rigging uh, ticket, what you've got to realise is when most of them arrive on the truck, they'll need to be rotated or stood up. All right? Now, in the process of rotating them, you're going to be using two hooks and once you rotate them and use two hooks, then you're going to need an intermediate rigging license to do it. Okay, um, if they were stood up, all right, you can move them around, um, but if you're going to rotate them, all right, in that instance, then you need to be a intermediate rigger. Okay, now your tilt up panels, all right, so they're basically laying flat on the floor. And when you lift them, you have to use some equalizing sheaves, all right? You can see these equalizing sheaves here, and that helps to stand them up, okay? Now, if you're using equalizing equipment, all right, you must be an intermediate rigger, okay? So there are your two different types of panels. People get confused between them. So you've got your precast, which are made off-site, and you've got your tilt-ups, which are made on-site, okay? Now, the equipment we use to lift them, all right? So we use uh, lifting clutches, all right? So there's a couple of different types, all right? So over here we've got our swift lifts or our mushrooms, all right, can be called either, okay? Now these are typically used on your tilt-ups, all right? And then over here you've got your edge lifters, okay? So your edge lifters are typically used on your uh, precast panels. Okay, now keep in mind if you are using um, lifting clutches, uh, they must be proof tested every 12 months. Okay, let's get rid of them. Right. What am I missing here? All right, so another handy piece of equipment uh, to use when you're doing the um, tilt up panels is a Burke bar. All right, so this is your Burke bar here. Right, very handy um, when you're putting your panels into place. All right. Okay, now 
Guy wires is another one that trips a lot of people up. So guy wires, if you've got a tower standing here, so these wires running off the side supporting it, right, they're known as guys, all right? So on a freestanding column, you're typically going to have guys made of flexible steel wire rope. Okay, another one over here, all right? So, where did that disappear to? Oh, there we go. All right, so, Another bit of terminology we use that people don't always understand is a roof truss. So a roof truss are basically the frames that support the roof on a house. Okay, so if we're talking about a roof truss, this is what we're talking about. Okay, let's get rid of that one. Let's get rid of that one. And let's get rid of that one. All right. So another thing that gets spoken about a lot in the basic rigging is a cantilevered crane loading platform. Okay, commonly known as a Preston bin or a loading bay or a crane bay. All right, you generally see them hanging out the side of um, high rises and larger buildings as they're getting built. All right, so they go into a building, all right, and they're supported by these uh, acro props, okay? So when these acro props are in place, they must be plumb okay and they've got to have minimal extension on here all right so that is a few of the components that we are going to talk about when you come into the dogging and the rigging classes all right so there is one more thing i want to bring up okay a podgy now there are a few different types of podgies all right <clears throat> and when people when someone says a podgy they can be talking about any one of them. Okay, it all depends who you're talking to. All right, so. Now, podgy is typically a rigger's best friend, all right? They will help you, um, especially when you're pinning steel or putting um, steel work into place. Uh, it helps you to locate the whole centers as you're putting the bolts in. Okay, so these are all known as the podgy. Okay, so you've got your open end podgy here, or your podgy spanner. Okay, in the middle here is what's known as a ratchet podgy. Okay, favoured by the scaffolders. All right, and you have a podgy bar. Okay, so they are all used um, when you are locating the whole centres in the um, when you're doing your steel work. Okay, they do have plenty of uses as you go along. All right, so I hope that helps you with a little bit of the terminology. Okay, so if you want to keep informed on other stuff involved in the assessments, all right, just don't forget to like and subscribe, all right, and thanks for watching.